Hello, my fellow broke aristocrats, and a happy tea time to you. I'm so glad you could join us for this really great tea time. We're going to be talking about the health, uh, the health lessons we can learn from the Victorian, and we're going to be talking a lot about the early formation of what would go on to become the modern naturopathic medicine movement. So I'm very excited about this because. I, I am a licensed naturopathic doctor, excuse me, and so uh, this is something that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, as many of you already know, naturopathic medicine was really formulated based on some of the values and principles of the Victorian era. So that is what today's conversation is about. What can we learn about health and naturopathic medicine from the Victorians, and were they on to anything? What can they teach us about not only uh, health but frugal sane living so before we do all of that we're going to talk a little bit about the tea that I have picked uh, for today and that is vanilla rooibos rooibos tea contains no caffeine and it's loaded with vitamin C antioxidants minerals and other nutrients and for that reason if you are somebody who's struggling to try and find a good uh, drink, particularly one uh, that is not going to keep you up at night, you may want to try rooibos. The great thing about rooibos is that you can always blend it with something else, whether it's mint or uh, vanilla, and then it gives it uh, an even uh, better flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and take a sip. And um, wow, it tastes really great. Mm. It's, it's just a very refreshing, great taste. The other great thing about rooibos tea is that you can have it cold. Okay, so a little bit about the Victorians. The Victorians, as I've mentioned uh, previously, used to have uh, wellness spas. The wellness spas really were heavily influenced by what was going on in Europe. As far as, uh, as deep into Russia, people would have wellness spas. Some of these wellness spas were quite beautiful and uh, uh, quite intense, uh, people would go to what were known as watering holes and they would water themselves. Uh, the Victorians believed that water had intense medicinal properties and they noted that because when animals get sick, they will often go to the water, drink water, rest and fast. And so it was based on early studies of animal behavior that they believed that water, just simple, pure water, could have medicinal properties. And so people would go to these watering holes, whether it was in Russia or England or in the United States, and they would rest and they would either drink uh, water and fast or they would eat a mostly vegetarian uh, diet. Still to this day in the United States, there are spas and retreats that are based on this early Victorian idea about health. People will fat, do water fast or uh, vegetarian fast. People would go on these retreats and they would often fast. An example of this would be True North which is based here in Santa Rosa, California and a uh, beautiful location and they have their own well water and there's been some interesting uh, research that's come out of True North where they found that people who simply reduce their caloric intake or switch to a plant-based diet can see dramatic improvement in health. What's interesting about the True North organization is that simply by reducing uh, the things that caused the sickness in the first place, reducing or eliminating those things that led to the disease, they see dramatic improvement in health. Not everybody can fast and so for that reason a True North also uh, offers uh, a vegan option where people can simply eat organic vegan food and uh, of course it's all monitored by doctors. So in addition to all of that, one of the interesting things about the Victorians was that they had really discovered something that would change the face of medicine forever. And what they discovered was germ theory. Germ theory it was this idea that little tiny creatures that we can't see that are invisible are causing disease. Well, you can imagine when this was first uh, postulated, the people who said, who said, hey, you know, disease is caused by little tiny creatures that are invisible that you can't see. 
the people who first started to say that were thought to be insane, and in fact that's what happened. They were laughed at, they were ridiculed, uh, they were told that they were insane, and in fact some physicians actually wound up uh, hospitalized in psychiatric facilities for suggesting that invisible creatures caused disease. But another great thing that the Victorians did that was also really pretty amazing is that they developed what would go on to become the modern microscope. And that meant that they were able to see things that we had never been able to see before. Think about that for just a moment. That is a really profound idea. They were able to see things that they had never seen before. And so the things that were not seen were real before they could be seen, but they were not acknowledged until the microscope. And one of the things, one of the first things that they were able to see was cells from a cork. They were able to slice a cork, put it under a microscope. The microscope could expand things 10 times beyond what normal human eyes could see. And they were able to see for the first time what a cell from a plant looked like. And the other thing that the Victorians liked to do is they liked to take meat and put it under a microscope. Well, needless to say, they were pretty horrified because they didn't have modern refrigeration. So think about that also for a moment. Uh, what your meat would look like if it was sitting on your counter for a few days and the flies had, had, had been at it and other um, uh, various different microbes and creatures had been at it. What would happen if you were to take a slice of that and look at it? under a microscope. I imagine you would be fairly horrified and would not want to eat uh, that, that uh, meat. We've done videos in the past about the Seventh-day Adventist. The Seventh-day Adventist was a, a, a Christian-based uh, uh, movement that grew out of the Victorians that were about uh, clean living, wholesome living, uh, temperance, uh, abstaining from meat because they saw the contamination firsthand. Again, you have to realize that this was before refrigeration and this was the first time that we were able to see uh, what these things look like under a microscope. And so, uh, in fact, the research does show that people who are living these moderate lifestyles do live longer and have healthier, happier lives. And of course, that has a uh, been part of what was known as the Seventh-day Adventist studies, but historically the Seventh-day Adventist grew out of all of that new wisdom that was coming about because the Victorians were really at the precipice of modern science, uh, germ theory, uh, hygiene, understanding the importance of water and bathing and cleaning oneself. All of this was part of the gift of the Victorians. And so consequently, it was really the beginning of a time that would uh, change modern uh, medicine and science forever, but also extend the lives of people all over the world. The other amazing thing about the Victorians is that it was the early research into uh, really uh, advanced uh, vaccination. Prior to that, there was scrapings that would happen to stop smallpox. And there were some crude types of surgery that were going on. But it was again during the Victorians when they had really found out what germ theory was that we start to see huge advances, not just in the ability to create vaccines, but also antibiotics, the ability to fight infection. And that came about with Louis Pasteur. I wanted to talk also about the temperance movement. And this came directly from Queen Victoria and uh, Prince Albert in the sense that they really advocated for modern living, modern living. Now, to be clear, they were not fans of the early feminist. Uh, Queen Victoria did not like the suffragettes. She uh, thought they were uh, rather horrid. But in defense of the suffragettes, uh, I think that Queen Victoria had such a wonderful and amazing marriage uh, to such a wonderful man, she really had no understanding of what the early temperance movement was about. And it was about uh, this problem where uh, alcoholism and addiction had been become rampant and uh, it was destroying families and lives and leaving people financially impoverished. And so one of the first things that the early temperance movement did 
was it tried to get control over alcoholism and addiction because it saw it saw alcoholism and addiction destroying families and bankrupting families and we see even today in 2018 those same struggles and this is one of the reasons why here at Broke Aristocrats a lot of those Victorian values are embraced to get back to the basics to eat simple good clean food to be predominantly vegetarian if not a hundred percent vegetarian to avoid alcohol except in small amounts uh, because uh, uh, we don't encourage obviously uh, addiction or any kind of uh, uh, behavior that could compromise one's health and ultimately uh, could become financially devastated devastating all right so that wraps up this uh, video of broke aristocrats i hope you enjoyed going back in time with me to the victorian era and talking about all the wonderful blessings they gave us in terms of what is now our understanding of modern medicine and health so take care everyone and thanks for watching bye bye